Hi, I'm Ari Rowan, and I'm here with uh, two great musicians, the great James Chirillo on guitar and my main man Alvin Atkinson on drums. And I want to talk to you a little bit about playing the bass in big bands. Now, originally, the big bands, the bass player, they had no amplifiers. And even into the 1940s and 50s, they rarely used microphones. So those guys, they played really strong so they could get the big sound that would cut through in, you know, three horn sections. Even though nowadays, we do use amplifiers, we do use microphones, you still have to get some of that big acoustic sound. So I would discourage you from playing the bass like this. Right, you need something more percussive and more, str and more strong, like this. Right, not only is there more volume, and more intensity, but it's also more percussive. It's more like a drum, and as we always talk about, big band music and jazz in general is really for dancing, so that's what we need. Everything, every instrument has to be a bit like a drum. One of the really important things that you have to think about is if the bass is too loud, right, you're using the amplifier too much, then the drummer's gonna play louder. And then the horns, they're gonna have to play louder because the drummer's too loud. And then the bass player feels like, wow, nobody can hear me. So then he turns up or she turns up. <laughs> then the drummer plays louder. And then the horn players play loud because they can't hear themselves over the drums. And all of a sudden, you don't have a musical sound, right? So the bass has to be the right volume. You have to, especially if the drum isn't mic'd, if there's no mics on the drums, you have to blend with the drum. You can't have all this huge sound coming out of an amplifier. So be aware of that so that everything is a very natural balance. The other thing is you say, well, how do I know how loud to play? Follow the lead voice at the moment. And when I mean the lead voice, that means the person or the section playing the melody or the soloist, or if there's a saxophone solely, follow that lead voice because then you'll always play the right volume, the right intensity. So I would discourage you from playing the bass like this. It's too light and it doesn't have enough, enough percussion. Listen to how it sounds in a rhythm section. That's not really the big band bass sound, right? We need something stronger, more like a drum. Here we go, one more time. One, two, three, four. That's more like a, a dance beat, okay? Now, one of the things that you have to be very aware of is that you're playing with the lead voice. Whoever's leading at the time, that means the person playing the melody or the section playing the melody. Or if there's a soli, that's, a, you, that's the lead voice at the moment. Or if there's a soloist playing a solo. That way you'll always play the right volume and the right intensity and the right uh, basic sound behind them. So I'm going to ask James to play a variety of different timbres and, and volumes and we're going to pretend that he's the trumpet section or the saxophone section or maybe he's a soloist or the pianist and just watch the way me and Alvin without even knowing what he's going to do we just react and we keep keep the music swinging but we're going to play right under him so it features him here we go your tempo James a one a two a one two three <laughs> The great bass players in the big bands, guys like Milt Hinton, Jimmy Blanton, Walter Page, you could hear them reacting to exactly what was going on. Who was the leader at the moment? That means, the, as I said, the soloist, 
the person playing the melody or the section playing the melody, always make sure that you're playing with the leader at that moment, okay? And then you'll always keep the music swinging, you'll always play together, and the feeling will always be right. I'm Ari Rowland. This is Alvin Atkinson and James Chirilla. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.